Hi, I'm Joe Salvati. Welcome to this month's episode of Zero Now. This month, we're talking about how do you keep up and specifically what you should be thinking about in your business to make sure you don't feel overwhelmed with the trends in the tech industry today. So starting off, I have Clinton Cowan from Tradypad. They're a mobile technology training specialist. Uh, Clinton, thank you so much for joining me today. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me, Joe. It's cool. Yeah, absolutely. Really excited to have our first online interview. I feel very uh, modern. Um, so I guess for you, you know, you're, you are running your own business and you're talking to other small businesses about, you know, the trends in the tech industry. You know, what do you do to keep up and make sure that you feel like you're on top of things? It's a full-time job these days. When, when Tradypad first started uh, well, seven years ago, there was nowhere near the, the apps and the solutions that were available nowadays. And so I've kind of had to evolve over time with keeping my finger on the pulse with everything. So my role now within Tradypad is really staying on top of all of the new things and what's out there and what they do and, and how they fit into the whole ecosystem because Zero is doing such a good job of, of building the ecosystem. There's all these new apps and everything coming out. Yeah, it, yeah it's, it becomes a, a, a bit of a task, but I, um, I've, I've developed some, I guess, some online tools using the technology to my, uh, to my advantage. Uh, I've subscribed to a lot of, lot of newsletters. Um, I get a lot of information from uh, CRN, Channel Wire. Uh, I get that, the Zero uh, developer update, uh, which is really cool. Keeps me on, on, uh, uh, in line with all the, the technology stuff. Um, I use an app called Flipboard. Flipboard's pretty oh, yeah, cool because you, yep. yeah, you can set, your, um, set the uh, subjects that you want to get information about and then I get my notifications and they come through and it sorts it all for me. So that's really cool. Um, I previously used um, some of the news tools. Apple News um, has evolved a lot over, over the years as well, but it was kind of, everything was a little bit everywhere and it was, it was kind of okay, but Flipboard's really helped with that. Um, and then I've got, I've got a number of uh, Google keyword alerts set up as well. So we get my alerts come through whenever the keywords are triggered um, about certain things. And then one of the things, one of the big things that I've done um, was turned off the automatic app updates. Uh -huh. um, so I end up with <laughs> hundreds of, or not hundreds, but I end up with heaps of notification or heaps of alerts and notifications right. about app updates. But it's good because I can go through the, uh, through the app store um, updates list and I can see what's been updated and, and then I can do the research into, you know, what the new things are and, and yeah. what's evolved. And yeah, that's been something takes a bit of time, but it's been something that's allowed me to keep a finger on the pulse when new app updates come out yep. and what they actually do. Um, so it's a combination of all of those things. Yep. Cool. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so, you know, thinking of the businesses that you help, you know, what's the mindset that they should be embracing uh, or that they need to embrace, you know, to keep abreast of changes in technology? It's all about being open to learning. Uh, so with, with Tradypad, we work with tradies. We work with the construction industry. We work with business owners and, and business people that have not necessarily had to learn um, a lot, you know, over their, over their career. As a, as a trader, you do your apprenticeship. You go to TAFE and you learn your trade and, and you do your license course and you, know, you do your education. And that's pretty much where it stops. Mm -hmm. And then you start your business and, and off you go and you do your work. Um, so there hasn't always, there hasn't ever been a lot of focus, I suppose, on, on professional development or learning or education. So that's probably the first thing that we, we have to really overcome is that mindset around, if I keep doing what I did yesterday, I'll be fine. Yeah. It's not like that anymore. You know, especially within trades and construction, they, the business owners have not had to use computers and technology like the rest of the business world has. Right. They haven't had computers, de desktops and laptops in front of them all day, every day, like the rest of the business world. So we're kind of making this quantum leap from paper to mobile devices. Right. And, and so they've got to be really open to learning and new ideas and, and we call it business transformation. So transforming their current processes that are very analog and very paper-based to you're modifying their workflows to suit the way that technology works. So it's got to be a lot of openness to learning, but also um, openness to change, which is a hard thing for a lot of people. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, so like, you know, thinking of a typical, typical conversation you have with a client when they're, you know, you're walking them through that business transformation, you know, what kind of concerns do they bring up or and how do you help them, you know, alleviate those concerns? Um, a lot of them, I think it's fear. There's a lot of fear because they don't understand it. Um, yeah. And so that just comes back to the education piece from the very outset of any engagements that we have with any clients, we're starting to educate. We're starting to talk about the new stuff and what it does and how it works. 
So you're breaking down that fear barrier and uh, making them understand that it's not that hard and it's not that right. scary. So once you once you kind of get through that that fear from the lack of understanding, they realise that it's it's not that difficult. And the old way versus the new way, there's no way that you would keep doing it on paper once you understand how technology can assist. So um, I guess it's really about that. It's about that understanding and that knowledge that um, technology is not going away. It's here to stay and, and it's not that scary. And, and once you start and you embrace it and you understand it, it just flows. You know, it's the, the mobile devices nowadays and the apps are built to be so user-friendly and so intuitive that it's so much easier than, what, than the old way of doing things. So it's pro- probably just getting through that initial barrier of understanding mm-hmm. You know, we use them in our personal life. This would include anyone in any, any industry. We use them multiple times a day. And it actually shouldn't be mentally once you get over it, not that big a leap to think about how you use apps in business. And, you know, you can, you can see quite quickly how you get those benefits. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And the, um, uh, there's always a lot of um, visibility of that adoption life cycle curve. Yep. Um, and, and the construction industry is still early days. It's still, you know, we're, we're still at that early majority of, um, of uh, adoption, but tradies have kind of gone from zero technology usage across the industry or, you know, maybe two to 5%. Mm-hmm. They're really just ramping up because the technology has been abs- is absolutely perfect for the industry. It's almost like the construction industry has been waiting for, uh, waiting for the, t- for the technology to evolve to a point where it suits um, right. the way that the businesses work and the way that the industry works because of the traditional laptops and desktop and, and internet connections weren't practical years ago. They've been waiting for the mobile devices and the, and the cloud-based apps to come along for it to be applicable to be used within the industry. So now we see this massive, um, this massive curve of, of uh, adoption and usage just because it's so suitable to the industry now. You know, at Zero, we have a, a, a um, monthly quarterly report called you know, Small Business Insights. You know, what we've seen from our research is that you know, biz- businesses grow faster uh, when they're connected to apps, you know, have you seen that in your work, working with some of your clients? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. We're we're seeing it um, all day, every day, because we the business has been running, Trading Pad's been running for years now, and we've got a lot of our early clients that have gone on to System A, and that's helped the business um, become more efficient, become more effective, but collect data and be able to, I guess, focus on the things that make the business the most money because they've now got the visibility of it. So the business grows naturally. So we're constantly putting on new users onto the systems that our clients are using. And and a lot of our clients have gotten to a point where they've outgrown the original system and we've helped them transition to system B. Right. And and that's can be scary for some people to think about, but it's not that hard. You know, it's 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 like stepping stones. And so that original system puts the foundation and the framework in place and, and the knowledge that they need. And then the, the, the step, like just pulling the data out and putting it into the new system isn't that hard, but the businesses have grown so much that the basic system that they started on is just not, it's not doing what they need now. You know, they've, they've evolved in terms of complexity and, and functionality requirements. So we've done that heaps of times. And so that's, I think that's a really good indicator of the fact yeah. that without that technology, they wouldn't have been able to get to that point of growth and control and knowledge. So many tradies and so many business owners that I talk to say you, you grow and you add more people and it just adds more headaches and you kind yeah, of downsize yeah. and go back to what you were doing before. It's because it's grown without control and without visibility. Whereas the tools that we've got now, you've got full visibility. Data is everything. So I had a conversation with one of my clients yesterday who said to me, he's a sole trader and we were talking about, the ability to do time tracking in the app that he was using. And right. he said to me, I don't need that. I don't, I don't need that stuff. I don't need to, you know, it's a big business does that stuff. I said, well, not necessarily. If you're able to track your time and track your materials and costs on your jobs, you can then analyze which jobs are most profitable, which ones are making you money he's busy. You know, he's, he's knocking back work left, right and center. Um, but he can then analyze the jobs and work out which ones are making the most money for him and he can Absolutely. focus on those. And, and only do the work that's going to be most profitable. And so once yeah. I put a spin on it like that, he, he's, he thought about it in a completely different way. He thought, oh, well, it is worth spending the time to do that stuff because, yeah, it's going to, be, it's going to maximize my time usage and profitability. So it's, 
another one of those kind of mindset changes of technology and, and data entry is for big business, not anymore. Data is everything. I mean, it's great. I think one of the things we really want to do here at Zero is we want to bring the capability and technology of big business to small small business. And exactly what you're saying, you know, that's what's happening in today's world. Like we all have it at our fingertips. You don't need a millions of dollars to implement a system that's going to give you the, give you that data and you know really help you excel. Um, so no, let's bring it back to you. You know, what's what's your favorite piece of technology that you use? And actually, I'm going to ask for both in your business and you know personally. I'll start with personally. Uh, I, it'd have to be my watch. Yep. Um, from a hardware perspective, my watch, I always looked at, at um, smart watches and thought, oh, I, don't know, I don't think that's, I don't think that's really necessary. You know, it's going to be buzzing and beeping and doing all that stuff and alerting me to things that I don't really necessarily need to be alerted to. But um, I bring it back to the data, the data that you, <laughs> that's collected by this thing that you can have visibility of is amazing. So I use a, um, I use an app called auto sleep, which my sleep tracking and sleep is such an important thing to keep you sharp and to keep, yep. to keep us on top of everything and keep the right mindset. Uh, and so I, I've really gotten into um, tracking my sleep and analyzing the sleep and the amount of deep sleep and the amount of times you wake up. And so this auto sleep gives you this amazing data on the quality of your sleep. And it really ties in with how prepared you are for the day. So that's probably one of the one of the ones that I'm using the most at the moment. And then I, I um, I'm also using Runkeeper um, on my watch for tracking activity, footy training, and running around and stuff. Just trying to keep active, trying to keep keep moving again for the for the mindset. So that's probably that's the uh, the personal stuff. And then business, um, I think Flipboard would have to be one of my favourite apps at the moment, just because of that information that it's that yep. it's bringing to me in a in a controlled manner. You're not getting uh, overwhelmed by stuff. You can control. Uh, what's being presented, um, and then within the business itself, we we use a product called a cello, mm -hmm. uh, and a cello is our everything. It's our machine that runs the business, and it just get keeps getting better and better and better. We have got it integrated to zero, um, and it handles everything from initial inquiries through to invoicing and and the whole lot. And they're um, it's a good Aussie company now based in uh, now based in the US, but they've. The, the, the amount of development and the new stuff that they're bringing out and the automation that it's brought to our business has been fantastic. Uh, so it's, it's a bit of an evolving beast, but yeah, it's really cool. Awesome. Well, Clinton, you know, thank you so much for sharing your insights. You know, really, really interesting. Uh, I really appreciate it. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me, Joe. I'm really excited to be joined today by Ali Garrett from All In Advisory. Ali, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me along. My pleasure. Of course, you've recently ventured out on your own. Congratulations, it's really exciting. Yeah. And so, you know, you had this breadth and wealth of experience, but you know, what do you do personally to feel like you're keeping up with the trends in your industry? Well, in the industry, certainly there's lots of things always going on. So I focus a lot on socials, mm. um, you know, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, there's a lot of people on there giving a lot of content away for free. Yep. Um, and so there's obviously influences our industry as well. So I follow them and just make sure that I'm on top of where they're at. Mm. And uh, that kind of helps me to keep up. Is there any technology that you use in your business or things that you use, you know, that are your favorite things to sort of stay in touch and be aware of what's going on? Yeah, obviously the socials once again yeah. to keep in touch yeah. and, and keep on top of things. In relation to the business, um, because we set up in October, we've had the opportunity to create a cloud ecosystem okay. or an app stack that just works really well for us um, and is just singing sweetly. So that was actually one of the reasons why I wanted to venture out on my own. I had um, a lot of ideas and so did the team around what we wanted to utilize. And we knew that we could get an accounting firm running really well mm -hmm. with just cloud software. Yep. And we've actually set up without any admin um, oh, type wow. expense uh, or any admin people mm -hmm. because we're actually utilizing the cloud software to basically automate that for us. So I've kind of got the sweet spot, I think, <laughs> in where, where, where you need to be in an accounting firm. So, you know, for those out watching who maybe zero partners or are starting their own small business, you know, how would, how would you recommend they get started and take that baby step to not be overwhelmed on you know, either keeping up or deciding how to move towards a more you know, technology-focused business? Yeah, I think you've got to start with the foundations and the basics. So looking at, from an accounting point of view, what your baseline accounting product is going to be. Clearly for me, that's zero, mm -hmm. we're true blue. Yeah. Um, and then looking from there, what other um, important factors in your business uh, whether it be point of sale or whether you know, it be familiar around the compliance side. You yeah. look at the basic foundational products that would be useful to you 
Mm. Um, and the things that I guess really worked for us is we went to a lot of road shows, we went to a lot of conferences, we did a lot of research, once again following the influencers, um, and tagged in a lot with the software suppliers. So we actually understood the products, knew what they were doing and how they would integrate with each other. So that's I guess how we started. Excellent. And it's worked really well. Cool. So, you know, when speaking with your clients, especially, uh, you know, as you move into your new business, and of course, you're, you're, you're in the phase of getting more and more clients, you know, how do you make sure and how do you encourage them to stay on top of trends within their industry or just feel like they know what's happening so they can make smarter decisions to grow their business? Well, one is to connect with us, yep. the trusted advisor. Um, always really important um, for clients to do that. And I think the industry associations that they're involved with as well. Um, and then, you know, in every industry, talking to others in that industry, I think is really key and leaning on each other, mm -hmm. finding potentially a mentor who's been there and done that, somebody that you would respect in the industry and allowing other people in your team to have a voice. Mm -hmm. You know, they're incredibly intelligent people, utilise them, yep. utilise their skill sets. You can't do it all on your own. Yep. Um, and so certainly from that perspective, it's really around building that community around your business mm -hmm. that can help you, realising where you've got the weaknesses and pulling people in that can really support you and, and give you that stopgap. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking to your clients, you know, what, what do you recommend they do to look at you know, their weaknesses and strengths and necessarily how it pertains towards the, you know, operational running of their business. Yeah, do you know, I think a lot of business owners actually know what their strengths are and yep. actually know what their weaknesses are. What you need to do is to help them to find the resource that's going to stop gap that weakness. So um, for me, I'm very well connected. So if it's a banker or a financial planner or somebody else that they need, I can find somebody to kind of fill and stop gap that for them. Mm -hmm. The other thing is actually utilising technology. Yeah. You know, they may not understand it or know how to use it, but they can um, employ somebody or bring in somebody that does to actually build that foundation for them. So they're just the end, the end user. They're not actually having to build that system yeah. themselves. Great. So, you know, Ali, you've mentioned there's, you know, there's lots of information out there. You're up on social media, et cetera. Are there any, you know, blogs or podcasts or other things that you really enjoy to help you stay on top of things? I really enjoy uh, The Trenches mm -hmm. um, as a podcast. Great one to listen to. Mm -hmm. No fake news there. Yeah. And in relation to research, I, I like to do my own research. So I'll actually, you know, Zero Blog's a good one as well, but I'll actually go to software suppliers, have a look at their product, actually mm -hmm. demo it. Yeah. Um, if, if a software supplier is offering a free demo, yeah. I'm actually in there just, yeah. just to see. It may not be something that I'm going to use or a client's going to use, but just so that I'm aware that it's actually out there. Yeah. Um, and zero con, zero roadshow, absolute gold. You are literally sitting down and being fed. Yeah. Um, so the one thing I found as a small business owner is that, you know, a lot of times you have to actually be proactive and feed yourself. So going out there and doing your own research and being really proactive, mm -hmm. the zero information that's available, you're literally being fed. Right. So um, it's one of those things where you can kind of sit back and actually listen and take a lot in. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you, you know, utilising the teams around you and their knowledge and skills as well. So yeah. Great. So, I mean, you know, always when we're taking on information, there's a challenge that will make it that overload. What do you do to sort of make sure you, say, take one thing away to, to implement or action if you learn something like that? Yeah, and I think what's helped me moving into that cloud space is because it's so large, we specialise. So for us, we've gone down the path of tourism and hospitality. Mm -hmm. I know most add-on products to um, zero mm -hmm. in that space. Mm -hmm. And even if they don't connect, I do know about them and know how to get them connected in yep. some way. So for me, I'm not looking at the hundreds and hundreds, I'm looking at a pocket. Right. And I want to specialise in that pocket so that I can deliver to the clients yep. and, and build that ecosystem that works for them. And the other thing I do is I make sure I'm a specialist in that product. So if I'm utilising a product, I want to maximise it to its full potential. I just don't want to get something else to bolt on. Mm -hmm. um, and I've actually found that utilising, you know, a suite that um, works well and you're maximising as much as you can get out of that software before you're building other pieces on top will actually deliver you the best outcome. So I don't know everything about every system, every system and every add-on, but the ones I do know, I know well, and that helps me to keep up. So I'm keeping up with this many. Right. I have general knowledge about the rest, mm -hmm. but with this many, I'm a specialist. Many people uh, today uh, often talk about their fear about the, the speed of transformation. Uh, do you share that concern at all? No, I don't share that concern at all. And I think some of that concern comes around uh, people feeling like their jobs might be um, eliminated mm -hmm. at some point. And from what I've seen, if you're able to harness the technology, then um, the client relationship that you have is, is always going to be there. And in fact, it can actually make it better. Yeah. So what I've seen in my world is if I've been able to harness that technology and deliver to the client what they need from an accounting point of view, I can then work with them 
on the actual real numbers rather than just the old historical stuff yep. that we never used to look at. So, no, I don't share that concern. And in fact, I think that there's so much more coming that it's actually going to benefit us. And I think we need to see the opportunity from it mm -hmm. rather than being something that it's scared of. But I know that people don't like change, whereas I do. Yep. So maybe they might Excellent. not agree with me. Excellent. So I guess continuing on from that, you know, some people might feel like they can't keep up. Um, you know, what tips would you have to encourage them that, you know, that they can absolutely do it? Yeah, I think um, going to somebody that has e some experience in it is obviously a, a good starting point. So not just feeling like it's just totally up to you. And once again, starting at that really foundational level. So work out from the very basics, what is it that I need to know? What is it that my clients need? Working on that mastering that skill and then just starting to build from there and definitely use the socials follow the influencers like david boyer heather smith um, look at what they're doing you know i just get on twitter and i can actually see yeah. from a from that point of view where everybody's at the big issues come out from there also being part of things like facebook groups yep. like facebook user groups i know zero's got a great one getting on there people if you have a question you can put on there people answer it for you yeah. so you know you don't have to do hours and hours of research um, and the other thing is just just being as proactive as you can. So doing a bit of reading and it's more about trying to, for me, trying to help my clients. And so I want to do that. So I'm going to proactively go out there and find the answer for them. Great. Well, Ali, it's been really fantastic, really informative. Thank you so much for joining us today. No worries. Thanks for having me. Joining me is Rihanna Brown, founder and futurist at the Friday Lab. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Your futurist, you're not predicting the future. But you know, how do you try and stay ahead of trends to understand, of course, by combining what you see potentially coming down the track based on the history or the past? Yeah, so I, it's a really interesting concept because underpinning that notion of staying ahead of trends is a, an image or a metaphor of the future that we just have to try and keep up. I call it like the hamster wheel. Is right. If only we can keep up or get ahead, we'll have competitive advantage. Trends are really helpful um, because they give us some indication of uh, a very uh, uncertain space, but they have limitations. Mm. Trends aren't fixed, they change. Yeah. Uh, we assume a really linear path with trends. Uh, we're often not very good at weaving together a range of trends to tell a broader story. Mm -hmm. We might pick a tech trend, for instance, and then ignore all of the other kind of social trends around that. Really good example of, um, in the healthcare space, digitizing health records, yeah. and yet, we're assuming that everyone would want that process to be digitized. Mm -hmm. Yet the emergence of social trends around privacy mm. uh, are, are very counter to that. Hence the My Health Record not succeeding right. recently because of privacy concerns. So I, I think they're a helpful guide, um, but, it, but they're also very near term, they're knowable. Mm. And if we know them, if you know them, so does the rest of your industry. Right. The competitive advantage sits on the fringe of those trends. What's emerging, what's really early that's kind of occurring at the moment? You know, you've mentioned a lot of people sometimes feel you're on the hamster wheel or things are moving too fast and we're transforming as a society too quickly. You know, what's your view on that? Or, you know, how do you, people who might have those concerns, how do you sort of walk them through that process? You know, if you look back on any kind of big disruptions at the moment, take automation, for instance, yep. It's not a new, um, it, it, it's, it's emerging now, but it's not a new phenomena that's been happening for quite a long time. Critical futurists will look at emerging trends and issues and then map that back yep. twice as far as you go f forward. Um, but what is shifting is, and it's undeniable, is the kind of pace of change and disruption. You know, many people in society today might feel that society is transforming so quickly or there's a lot of things happening and they can't keep up. You know, um, what's your take on that and sort of how do you help them, uh, you know, assuage those concerns? I think it's, it's a fair concern to have. A lot of what's emerging now isn't necessarily new. Automation has been around for a significant period of time now but the pace of disruption and change is kind of occurring quite rapidly. For me, I think one of the most powerful things that organizations can do is reclaim time to think. Step away from the present and ask more elegant questions, I kind of describe it as. Where are we now? You know, what's, what do we know that's emerging and changing in our space? What don't we know that's emerging and changing in our space? What does it mean for us then? Um, and I think that gives you the kind of sense of shifting from being on the hamster wheel to just stepping away and getting a better sense of what is the context that we're working in? Mm -hmm. How is it changing? What does that now mean for us? 
in terms of what we do now, what we let go of, what we experiment with and what we take forward and how that transition kind of occurs. For me, I think a really interesting one is the shift in the accounting space, for instance, from, and I like to use metaphors, but from uh, bean counters, yeah. and I've had this experience personally with my accountant, yeah. from bean counters, the introduction of trends around automation of that kind of process, yeah. to now uh, trusted strategic advisors. Mm -hmm. You know, the shift in my own experience with my accountant in the last six or seven years is quite indicative of the broader shifts in that space. Right. So now I'm pressing the button from zero to getting the information. Um, more of our conversations are shifting to, you know, how can you help me navigate the system? Um, more recently, our conversations are shifting to how can you help me or, or what insights do you have around transitioning coins to fiat currency? Mm -hmm. That one was a bit of a stretch. Yeah. Um, but, but that's a really interesting trend that's shifting kind of some of the accountancy yeah. space what happens in accounting when totally new markets and, and a globalised kind of currency emerges. Mm. So for some people you know, watching or just some people in their own business might feel a bit overwhelmed. You know, what are some of the, of the baby steps they can, you know, they can take to sort of keep, a, keep ahead or keep up in either in futurist thinking or just in general? Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of things I kind of talk about because I really, I mean, I personally get that sense of it feels so overwhelming, change is so rapid, um, and that can be quite paralyzing in terms of action. There's a few things that I think through. So one is start scanning yourself. Mm -hmm. um, everyone has an innate foresight capacity. It's why we pack a brolly, it's why right. we look at the weather, it's why in Melbourne we pack a brolly, thongs, yeah. you know, a jumper, and, once, yes. and swimming, swimmers. Um, so start scanning and understanding and, and looking for kind of little signals of shifts in your industry and outside of your industry. You can use that as an input to, I, I kind of call it ways to rehearse the future. So scenarios. Mm -hmm. So you've got scanning inputs. You're saying, this is interesting. Cryptocurrencies are having a significant impact in our space. Rehearse the future with a scenario by saying, what would our accountancy firm look like in a world with, where clients are demanding navigational and, and regulatory guidance around cryptocurrency? Mm -hmm. What does that mean for us? How does our core business change? How doesn't it? And the transition space, because I know a lot of organisations get this information about the future, they understand it, but they're, they're not willing to kind of let go of everything and right. fundamentally change overnight, and nor should they. So part of that transition is what of our core business kind of stays, what doesn't, and one framework that I use to help in that transition, and I call it small bets in the long game. Uh -huh. So what is based on what we're now learning about the future and the, and the intelligence we're gathering about the future, what are some of the small bets that we can do in the long game? So a small bet might be, maybe we're gonna start sending people on that cryptocurrency course yep. instead of pushing it away. Right. We're not gonna overinvest. it's Goldilocks level of investment, enough where it's a genuine kind of a, a, a investment, but not overinvest right. where if that trend wasn't to continue that we've, you know, we've overinvested right. and, we're, and we're stuck and rigid in that space. So it's kind of what are those small bets in the long games? What are those small side experiments that you can be doing? The small new partnerships that you can explore with other startups, for instance, sending staff on training, researching into a particular space. They're the transitionary type actions for me where people actually do something with the information that they've learned about the future or the emerging futures. Do you have any tools or apps that you, you use or recommend to your clients to sort of help them you know, keep up in today's day? Uh, there's lots of tools in the, in the Futurist kind of toolkit. One um, tool which is called the Futures Cone, mm -hmm. uh, developed by a brilliant mentor of mine. Um, and it, it helps you in the reframing of the way that you think about the future. So one of the fundamental principles of that critical Futurist hold is there's not one but many futures. Right. So we often have the projected future mm -hmm. and imagine this out in kind of like a cone. Straight down the middle is that assumed BAU future. Yep. But not far beyond that is probable, there's a probable future, that's kind of the trends that are emerging and the further out in time you go, the broader the possibility. So we talk about projected futures, probable futures, possible futures, mm -hmm. things that are possible that could kind of emerge based on current knowledge, things that are plausible, yep. and then things that are totally preposterous. Yep. And what we're experiencing now 20, 30 years ago would have been in that kind of space. So that's a brilliant tool to help you learn that 
there are a range of alternative futures, not just one single kind of future. Rihanna, thank you so much for joining us today. It was really informative. No worries. Cheers. <laughs>